My wife just picked up this 2016 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. So today I'm gonna to be doing a transmission service and a rear diff service. These don't have to be done together, but it kind of makes sense to do them together. I'll show you once we get under here. Now we picked this thing up. It's, a, it's got a good Carfax. I don't entirely rely on Carfax, but they usually tell you if you shouldn't buy a vehicle. They don't always tell you that you should, but if you of course get something with a terrible Carfax, I would avoid it, but sometimes a Carfax just hardly has any info. In this case, it had a lot of info. It has every oil change ever done documented. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot of service done to this thing. And in fact, it was missing any service history on the transmission or the rear diff. So that's why it's on the list. But also, it's got 165,000 miles on it. So we're gonna find out what does transmission fluid in one of these hybrids look like at 165,000 miles? That'll be a great question to answer because people frequently comment on my transmission service videos asking, hey, my car has 150, 180, 250,000 miles. Should I do a transmission service? And generally, I would always say yes, but there are some exceptions to that. However, we're gonna find out what does this one look like at 165,000 miles with no previous service history that I was able to find. Please check the description below for torque specs, links to the stuff I'm using for any other data that may or may not even be listed in the video of quantities, all that stuff. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you do click on any of the links and buy the products, it won't cost you anything more, but I will get a small commission from that. That's one of the ways that you can help support the channel, so I appreciate clicking on those links and buying those products if you are in need of any of those products that we're using here today. With that, let's get to the list of parts and supplies you will need. It's a pretty small list. Um, first, we'll cover the tools. I've got a small hand pump. Um, I've got 3 a drive, regular ratchet, as well as a torque wrench for torquing all the plugs back to spec. And then all four plugs are the same 10 millimeter hex. In this case, I'm just using a socket right here. And then we'll get to the controversial subject of transmission fluid. I have a supply of this Valvoline Max Life ATF on the shelf, and I am comfortable using this in everything that they recommend it for. On the back is a list of recommended applications. And on this list, they do list Toyota, and it is recommended for applications requiring the Toyota WS fluid. So, why Valvoline and not Toyota? Well, Toyota is just fine. I am by no means telling you you should not use Toyota fluid in this. That is an excellent choice. I will link that in the description also. However, this Valvoline stuff has treated me great. I have not had issues, even with my truck with 360,000 miles on it and the original transmission. This is the fluid I use in that, which by the way, that is an Allison transmission also listed on the back as a recommended application. So uh, that's why I'm choosing this. Choose whatever you feel comfortable with, as long as it's appropriate for the WS application. It gets complicated. I don't care what the logo is on your vehicle. It doesn't mean they're the ones that manufactured the transmission. I also don't care what the logo is on your transmission fluid bottle they may or may not be the manufacturer. In fact, in this case, Valvoline, I'm quite certain is the manufacturer, but the Toyota fluid, I would be willing to bet is not refined by Toyota. So somebody else is making it. Well, and I don't know who makes this transmission, but in the case of my truck, my GMC, it's got an Allison transmission. A lot of Hondas and Toyotas use Asin transmissions. Uh, ZF is another big transmission manufacturer. So just because it's got a Toyota logo on it doesn't mean it's a Toyota manufactured transmission. Also, just because your Toyota Fluid has a Toyota logo on it doesn't mean it's Toyota Fluid. So it gets complicated, and that's why I am very specifically stating that you should use a transmission fluid that's recommended for applications needing the type of fluid you need. The brand of it, not real worried about. The type of it definitely has to match. Now that I got that out of the way, because that always brings up lots and lots of comments, let's get this thing up in the air and get to work on it.
We've got this thing up in the air. One thing I failed to mention that you also need is a drain pan. I've got one appropriate for a lift under here, but a regular drain pan, if you're doing this just on your garage floor, is perfectly acceptable. We've got a drain and a fill plug under here, and we've got another drain plug that we want to avoid. This vertical one right here is for coolant, so we're going to steer clear of that. We've got two horizontal ones. We've got one up top here right by the CV shaft output and then one on the bottom. The upper one, of course, is the fill and the lower one is the drain. We're going to crack open the fill plug first just to make sure that we don't have any trouble with that. You don't want to find that out after you've drained it. And usually they take something like that where it's just kind of a, a quick crack to break it free and then it's going to spin out by hand very easily. So we've got that broken free. I'm not worried about that anymore. So now we're gonna go into this one here. We'll do the same thing. Give it a good hit right there to break it free. And then we can roll our drain pan under here. All right, gonna do my best to get this well lit so you can see exactly what this fluid looks like with presumably 165,000 miles on it. And that looks dark, but not scary. The nice thing about these Toyotas is that this is a complete fluid drain. We are not gonna be exchanging a third of the fluid or even half of it. We're gonna be draining all of it out of here. So there is what it's looking like. That is dark. So I would say, as the miles would indicate, this is obviously overdue. However, that's not scary. I'm not concerned about the life of this transmission. I'm just glad that it's getting serviced now. We can also loosen up and remove the fill plug at this point, which will speed up the drain process as you see there. Because all the fluid is gonna drain out, I will give this a few minutes and let it completely drain. All right, it has basically stopped dripping. We can wipe off the little bit that's there. This was kind of dark. It seems like people really kind of neglect their hybrids. They think they just don't need any service done, which is simply not true. But I like the way Toyota does this. This is a 100% fluid change and it is incredibly easy. Even the fill process is just takes all the guesswork out of it. So we're gonna reinstall the plug here. Now I will mention, I'll link new crush washers. There are so many times I just reuse the crush washers and that's what I'm doing in this case. I've wiped everything off and uh, I just don't typically have trouble with that. But if you're going by the book, you should absolutely replace those crush washers. The torque spec for this drain plug is 29 foot-pounds. So we've got our torque wrench set to 29 foot-pounds and we're gonna snug it down. There we go. Verify that the vehicle is close to level when you're refilling both the transmission and the rear diff. Now to refill the transmission, I've got my inlet hose on the pump straight in the gallon jug and I'm gonna put the outlet up here right into the fill plug on this transmission and it feeds in pretty far sometimes you got something right in there that makes it complicated this one's pretty easy the only thing to watch for is when you start pumping that you don't blow the hose out so I'm gonna start pumping fluid in and I believe it's gonna be around a gallon but I will put notes of all that down in the description I will skip a lot of this because it's quite boring up until the point when it's full. All right, it is dripping out and I've got about exactly a gallon in it. We'll pull this out and verify that it's in fact full. Sometimes you can get it kind of spitting back and get a couple drips out, but it's not full. That is running down so I am confident it is full 
So we will reinstall the fill plug. Torque spec is 29 foot pounds for the fill plug as well. We'll wipe everything off. And we're ready to move to the back. Here we are at the back. This is the back of the vehicle, front of the vehicle, driver's side and passenger side. We've got our drain plug and our fill plug. The fill plug is recessed in here a little bit. We're gonna see how well we can get in there. Same thing with this. We wanna crack the fill plug loose first so that we know we're not gonna have a problem with it. And then we should be able to do it by hand. We'll leave it like that. We'll go to the drain plug. And both of these are a little corroded, so you wanna make sure that you get the bit in there good so you don't strip it out. We're gonna do the same thing here. Break it free with a good hit. Then we can take our bit out and we can drain it. Now this looks quite clean. So as not to make a mess, there you can see that looks pretty good. We're gonna run this up and then I'm gonna take out the fill plug to let it drain out fast. And there we go. So there again, that looks really, really good. I wish the transmission fluid had looked that nice, but it's nice to see that something does anyways. Now in the back here, we've got a magnetic drain plug and a non-magnetic fill plug. So make sure you get those back in the right order when you put them on. We're gonna wipe this one off. I've already wiped it off a little bit here, but we're gonna get it as clean as we can get it. We've got that nice and cleaned off now. Just like in the front, I'm gonna reuse these crush washers. You can approach that however you feel most comfortable. We're just down to a trickle here and it looks so good, I'm not worried about getting every ounce out. Now, I don't know why this would be different. I'd expect this to be the same as the front. However, the torque specs I found said 35 foot-pounds for both the drain and the fill in the back here. So we've got our torque wrench set to 35. And we'll torque it down. Same Toyota WS spec for the rear. And we got that fill in a couple inches, not as far as in the transmission, but should make it easy nonetheless. And again, do this with the vehicle level and fill it up until it starts running out. Okay, I see it's starting to run out there. It looks like we've done about two quarts in the back. So we added like a gallon in the front and two quarts in the back. So I think you could get this job done with six quarts. I might put another squirt in there, but that looks like looks like I've pretty much got it right in the ballpark. But three more pumps, and that definitely is full now. Okay, it's just dribbling down a little bit, so I think we're looking pretty good on the the fill level there, so we will reinstall our fill plug and torque it to 35 foot-pounds. Getting close. And there we go, 35 foot-pounds. Now we can wipe it off and we're ready to drop the vehicle down. So there is all the service you need to do underneath this thing. These things are very reliable, very simple to service. I'm probably going to service the transmission again in maybe 30,000 miles, maybe even less, based on the fact that it was fairly dark. I've got the fresh fluid in there. There's a lot of detergents in transmission fluid. 
So that new fluid is really gonna kind of clean everything up. So if I do another drain and refill, it'll flush out anything remaining that was kind of stuck to the equipment inside of there. So may do that. I don't know if it's totally necessary, but it's so easy. In the end, we used about a gallon in the transmission and about a half a gallon, two quarts in the rear diff. So and technically I believe it's not a rear diff, it's a rear transaxle or something like that because there's a motor in it. There's no drive shaft front to back like in a traditional four wheel or all wheel drive vehicle. Hopefully that helps you go through this on your own, whether you're on a lift or in a driveway, it's all very, very simple to do. Thank you for watching. Again, check the description for any of the details. They'll all be down in there. For those of you that are incredibly concerned about this transmission failing because I used a Valvoline fluid, we're planning on keeping this vehicle for a long time. I expect we'll put a lot of miles on it. You will be the first to know. I will post in the description below if we have a transmission failure. Don't hold your breath. We'll see you next time.